Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to talk about the existence and uniqueness properties that we've seen before with matrix equations, but now we're going to translate those properties into the language of transformations. So given a matrix, A, M by N, we've already learned that there could be zero solutions, one solution, or infinitely many solutions to this equation. We've talked about the properties or characteristics of the matrix that help us to determine which case we're in. Specifically, we had a theorem that told us that, that there existed solutions to AX equals B for every B if these two things held, or one of these two things held, if the columns of A span RM. So that means that there's a linear combination of the columns of A that get us anywhere we want to be in RM, no matter what B value we're looking for in RM. And this directly relates to the second point. The matrix A has a pivot position in every row pivot position in every row. And so we've talked about that already with the matrix equation. We've also talked about that if the system has a solution, then that solution is unique if either of these conditions are true. One says the columns of A are linearly independent. Now this is related to the idea of free variables in the system. If the columns are linearly independent, then there won't exist any free variables. Now notice that this doesn't tell me that there are necessarily solutions, but if there are solutions, then they will be unique. And related to that is the fact that A has a pivot position in every column. Columns without pivot positions identify free variables, and so if we don't want free variables, there must be a pivot position in every column. So that's a quick review of what we talked about kind of related to existence and uniqueness for the matrix equation. And how does that relate to transformations? Well, since every linear transformation can be represented via matrix multiplication, we should be able to discuss the same ideas, existence and uniqueness of the solutions in the language of transformations. And that's what our goal is today. So as we learn any language, it always starts with vocabulary. And so there's two main terms, onto and one-to-one. -one, and we'll start with onto. So the definition of onto says that a transformation, a mapping, T from Rn to Rm, is onto Rm if each B is the image of at least one X in Rn. So that's the that's the definition. Now let's try to see what that means. So I'm going to draw, draw two different spaces. The first one is going to be my domain. And the second one is going to be my codomain. So the domain is where my inputs live. The codomain is where my outputs live. And so what this definition is telling us is the transformation is taking values from the domain and mapping them over to the codomain. And this transformation, there's my transformation T that does that mapping, this transformation is onto if no matter what B I'm talking about over here in the codomain, there exists some X over here that maps to that value. So as I've drawn it right now, this transformation would not be onto because I have two values, this one and this one, that aren't mapped to, they aren't the image of some x. But as long as I have an x that maps to all those b values over there, then it would be onto. In fact, I could add another x value and map it to the same b value. And this transformation is still onto, because it doesn't tell me how many x's must map to b. It just tells me there has to be at least one for every b. So let's say this in a couple different ways. For every B vector in RM, for everyone over there, there is an X vector such that, that's my shortcut for such that ST, such that T of X is equal to B. Now what does this tell us? So IE, this tells us that there is always a solution. Remember, if this linear transformation can be represented as AX equals B, then making sure there's an X that maps to B, that's asking if there's a solution to that matrix equation. So onto is really telling us, or answering, the existence question for us. Now what other implications of this definition of onto are there? Well, here's one in terms of transformation. So once again, we'll stay in terms of transformation, what does this thing mean? Transformations. 
the transformation is onto, if t is onto, then the range of t then the range of t the range of t is equal to the codomain so this might sound a little a little strange but really it's just an application of the definitions of each of these pieces what is the range of t it's all the outputs of our function all right so it's all these b's that we get from our function value. And what's the codomain? Well, it's, it's where all those B values live. So let's think about the opposite way. If there was some B in the codomain that wasn't in the range of T, wasn't mapped to from some X, well, then it would definitely violate this definition. So here, if T is onto, the range of T is equal to the codomain. Now, what else can we say? Well, if this is answering the existence question, then we can also talk about this in terms of uh, the matrix equation. So since our transformation can be represented because it's a linear mapping from Rn to Rm, since T of X can be represented as AX multiplication by that matrix A, then T is onto if and only if these other things are true, if these other ways we've represented the existence theorem are correct. So, so T is on to if and only if the columns of A span R M. And once again, this goes back to our earlier description of how we know there's a solution in the matrix equations. And we can see this also if There is a pivot position for every row. So now we can tie all these things together. We can talk about the transformation being onto, just like as we generate that matrix A, if there's a pivot position for every row. So this is onto. And once again, onto answers the existence question. If transformation is onto, then AX equals B has a solution. Let's go to our next definition, one-to-one. -one. So the definition for one-to-one -one is if a mapping, T, a transformation from Rn to Rm, is said to be one-to-one -one if each B is the image of at most one X in Rn. So let's draw another picture. So here, once again, is my domain. And over here, this is my codomain. And so what does it mean for this transformation to be one-to-one? -one? Once again, here's our X values mapping over here to our B values. This is our transformation that's doing that mapping. And if this transformation is one-to-one, -one, then this image B, this image that I have mapped to from this X, it can be the image of at most one X. So the best thing in this case is to show you what's not one-to-one. -one. If I have some other X that is mapped to the same B, that B would be the image of more than one X, and that would be a problem. So that would not be one-to-one. -one. Now one question might be, if I draw that other B value, is this transformation one-to-one? -one? In this case, it would be one-to-one, -one because zero is at most one. It doesn't say that every B must be mapped to. That's our definition for onto. One-to-one -one just says at most one X. That B is the image of at most one X. Okay, so what else does one to one mean? So once again, if we just re kind of rephrase it, we can say for every for every B in R M, there is at most one X such that T of X equals B. So there is at most one solution. This doesn't guarantee there is a solution, but it says if there is a solution, it is unique. So this answers the uniqueness question. Now, what about framing this in terms of a transformation? So what else does this say in terms of a transformation in that language? 
Well, one way we can express this idea, it's actually very useful for us to prove that transformations are one-to-one, -one, is we can say this. The transformation is one-to-one. -one. There's my shortcut notation for one-to-one. -one. If the transformation of one vector, x, is equal to the transformation of x2, if this true statement implies that x1 is equal to x2. Let's take this one apart a little bit. At the beginning, it looks like something that's not one-to-one. -one. It says if I have some x1 and some x2, and the transformation, so tx1 maps to this thing, but it's the same thing as what t of x2 maps to. It's saying it maps to the same place. It says this is only true if actually x1 and x2 are the same value. So in other words, the only way this could possibly be is if it was the same x mapping. Now, just like our definition for onto, we can also tie this back to our concept for matrix equations. So since our transformation of x, because that transformation is linear, we can once again think about in terms of the matrix multiplication. And since we've seen that one-to-one -one is answering the uniqueness question, this should also be related to the uniqueness question we had for the matrix equation. So if the transformation is one-to-one, -one, then the columns of A must be linearly independent. And associated with that is the other one that says that there must be a pivot position for every column. And so once again, it's tying the transformation of the matrix to actually allow us to investigate this more deeply. So if I want to talk about a transformation, is it one-to-one -one and onto, I can always generate the associated matrix and then evaluate that to find out whether it's one-to-one -one or onto. All right, so let's look at some examples real quick. So I have two different transformations here, and I have provided their associated matrices. So for instance, this transformation, T of X, I should use a vector symbol here, is the same thing as multiplication by this matrix. And the question would be, is this transformation one-to-one, -one, onto, or both? And so I can see that this matrix has a pivot position in every column. That tells me that the columns are linearly independent and therefore the transformation is one to one. But there's not a pivot position in every row. So that tells me that the transformation is not onto. Now, how else can I justify the meaning of that? Well, if I think about that matrix and I'm plugging in some X values as inputs, I'm hoping to get some outputs, my B values, B1 and B2 and B3 in this case. We've said it's not onto, and that makes sense to me because onto means I should be able to get to everywhere in R3. But if I just choose one example of a possible output, 1, 1, and 1, there is no linear combination of the columns of this matrix that will get me to this vector because this last component is 1 and not 0. And so I can't get to that. So that's an example of an element in R3, a vector in R3, that I can't get to. I say B that is not the image of some X under this transformation. So that makes sense why it's not onto. It is, however, one-to-one. -one. If I think of another example, the vector 3, 2, 0, once again, this example doesn't prove it, but it just highlights our thinking. Now, I can get to this vector as a linear combination, and that combination will be 3 of the first vector and 2 of the second vector. And that is the only linear combination that's going to get me to this solution. Once again, just reinforcing the idea that this is one-to-one. -one. Now, that doesn't change the fact that there are not solutions for this equation. Remember, one-to-one -one doesn't guarantee there are solutions. It just says if there are solutions, it's unique. Now, let's look at the second example. So now I have a different matrix representation for a different transformation. In this case, I see there's a pivot position in every row, but not every column. Every row tells me that this is onto. And that makes sense because if I look at the output, it would be a two-dimensional vector. And if I take a linear combination of just these first two, I should certainly be able to get to everywhere in R2. 
but this is not one to one. So it is not one to one. The first way I can see that is because there is not a pivot position for every column. So I have the last column which would give me a free variable in the actual solution. But that pivot position, that third column does not have a pivot position, therefore it's not one to one. Another way I can see that is because there are certainly not unique solutions. If I am looking for the solutions to this equation, well, x1 could be 2, and x2 could be 3, and x3 could be 4, or 5, or 6, or any value. And the linear combination of those three columns would still get me to 2, 3. So there are certainly infinitely many solutions. All right, so to summarize, we've looked at uh, how to determine whether a transformation is 1 to 1 and onto. And we learned how to look at the matrix representation of that transformation to make that determination. And that concludes this video. Thank you.